So finally, in this third video, we're going to discuss the procedure for Euler's method, how to write the procedure, explain the steps in the body of it, and then how to employ it, how to use it. So here it is. So you're going to define a procedure. Call, the, call it Euler. The colon equals uses the definition. And then you're inputting the function f for the right-hand side of your differential equation. Your initial time, t0, your initial y value, y0, your step size, I'm calling it h instead of delta t, just for the purposes of simplicity, brevity. And then t, which is the time you're wanting, you're wanting to approximate at. Then we define the local variables, t, y, n, and i. t and y are going to be for time and your dependent variable y in the procedure. n is going to count how many steps away the time capital T is, away from the initial time. And then i is going to be for the loop. OK, so we define initially t to be the initial value. All right, and this eval f will round that to a decimal number if it's, for instance, a square root or something. Similar for y, we're defining that to be the initial y value. n, again, this counts how many step sizes are you are away from the initial time. So, and it rounds it to the nearest integer. OK, so you're taking the difference between t, capital T, and your initial time, dividing it up by the step size, and that counts how many steps away you are from the initial time t sub 0. If the initial um, time is t sub 0, then n is going to return 0. You're 0 steps away, and then therefore you want to eject the initial value. If that's not the case, then you want to employ Euler's method. And this is similar to in the previous video when we summed up the first n integers. You're going to write a loop. All right, now in this case, y is going to be defined to be equal. This is what Euler's method says. There's no subscripts here, like it's written in the book or in, in the notes. But you take the your next y value is going to be equal your current y value plus your step size times the right hand the value of the right hand side function evaluated at your current time and your current y value. And then you increase t by one step of size delta h. You move t to the right by one. And then this saying that the last thing computed in the body is y just repeats what y is, and that's going to be the last thing ejected from the procedure. Then you end the do loop. You end the if clause and the procedure. OK, we press Enter on there. We'll see the output. And then we're going to employ it. So here's the differential equation we're going to solve. We're going to solve this first order equation, or approximate the solution, where the right hand side is 2y plus 1. Your initial condition is that your initial time is uh, 0, your initial y value is 1, your step size is 0.1. So you first need to define the function f, as we usually do in Maple. And now we're going to define a new function, all right, which we're going to call capital E. What we're going to do is send the t value we want to approximate at through the procedure. All right, so we're going to say it's f, which we just defined, and then the initial time was 0, initial y value is 1, the initial step size is 0.1, and then t is t. All right, so that's going to send it through, and when, once we put a number into this function, capital E, it'll give us a number back. All right, now let's check this out. If I plug in 2, we get this value. Okay. Okay, and just made the note that you can check this by hand or using Microsoft Excel. Okay, and also the rounding feature, what that will do for you. Now, this is going to be defined for any uh, value, which is a um, any value you can plug in in there. But it's only going to compute and use Euler's method when you're an exact certain number of steps away from the initial time. So if you're Step size is 0.1, you're starting at 0, then you're going to go to uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, eventually up to 1.7 or 1.6, and these are the values you would get. But what if you want to know the value of an approximate at, say, 1.68, which is not a step, certain number of step sizes of 0.1 away from 0? What it's going to do is round it to the nearest step or nearest t value away. OK, which is going to be 1.7. And that's it's going to return the same value back. Likewise, if you try putting in 1.62, then you're going to get to the get rounded down to 1.6, the closest t value, which is a step, a certain number of steps of size 0.1 away from t equals 0. And it returns that value back to you. 
All right, now, if you want to graph the approximate solution, what you do is you have to graph a sequence of points. Okay, what you're going to type in is a list of ordered pairs. All right, now, inside this, we're going to type in a sequence, and then the sequence is going to contain the ordered pairs. Now, we want to say that we're going to be a multiple of our step size away, and our step size is 0.1. So we're going to do 0.1 times k, where k in this case is a dummy variable inside the sequence command. And then we're going to put that t value, 0.1 times k, into the other procedure. OK, and then we're going to close that list. And we're going to say we're going to let run k, k run from 0 up to, now in this case, we're trying to approximate over the interval from 0 to 2. To go from 0 to 2 in steps of size 0.1, we're going to have to use 20 steps. So we need to go up to 20. This is something you're going to have to change on a case-by-case -case basis if you're using this procedure. Now when we plot that, OK, I've got to fix it first. I didn't close my right parentheses on the sequence command. Now we press Enter on that again, and we see the sequence of points form from Euler's method. OK, and you can use this to compare the value of the approximate solution to the exact solution if you solve the equation, the differential equation, the initial value problem exactly, then you know what the approximate solution are. You can take the difference or the absolute value of the difference.